Hi everyone, this is Jay Wells, and this is a new episode of Jay's Office Hours. It's May 25th, uh, Thursday, and uh, I normally do my office hours where I talk about some element of craft, and I um, tell you about how I write books and give you some ideas, but I thought today I would do something a little different, which is sort of update you on what's been going on in my writing life, because it's been a really busy, awesome month. And there's been a lot of great news. Um, and I wanted to talk about um, some stuff that's coming up uh, that you should be excited about if you enjoy reading my books. So first of all, I released a new book this month. Uh, it's called The Chosen Ones. It is a Sabina Kane short fiction collection. Um, it says short fiction because it's one short story in three novellas. So it's four stories in one book. As you can see, it's pretty thick. It's about 300 pages worth of story. Um, here's the, the, and then here's the back. Um, the stories that are involved in this collection are Fool's Gold, which is a prequel Sabina Kane novella, which is her first mission as an assassin at, back in LA in the 1970s. Um, it also gives the backstory on her feud with Slade Corbin, which comes up in the book. Um, he shows up first in The Mage in Black, and he's a pretty big character in the series. Um, so this is the backstory on how they met and what happened. Um, the second story in the collection is uh, Violet Tendencies, which is... It, if you read the series, um, there was one book where the demon Valva... V-A-L-V-A, -A, um, was there. And then at the beginning of the next book, she was gone. I think it was between Mage and Green. Um, but Mage and Black and Green Eyed Demon. Um, but I realized that I never really explained what happened when she left. So there's a short story in here called Violet Tendencies about what happened there. And then the third Sabina Kane story is one that's called Rusted Veins, which comes after the main series action so it comes several months after blue blooded vamp um and it's a kind of a mission that sabina adam and gagul go on to save a mage who was kidnapped um and it's set in new orleans in over halloween so it's pretty fun and then this is this one is the uh rest of bane's part of the cover i love the bats um and then so those are the Sabina Kane stories. And so there's like a prequel, an in the middle of the series story, and then a postquel. I don't know if that's a thing. I'm calling it a thing. Um, and then the fourth story in here is actually a Cape Prospero story. Uh, it's called Firewater. And it's also a prequel novella, which is um, the um, story of one of Kate's first uh, cases as a cop when she is um, shadowing... Uh, a, a, a more experienced vet cop who um, works the river patrol in Babylon. And it's a really fun story. Um, it also tells you the story of how Kate met Baba, who of course is her neighbor in the series, the old, like 70 year old witch, um, who is her neighbor in the main series. Excuse me. I have to caffeinate. Um, <coughs> So if you haven't checked this out, please do. It's it's a really great deal. It's 12 bucks for four novellas, basically. And there are some publishers right now who are selling single novellas for $12. So it's a pretty good deal. It's a beautiful cover. It's a matte finish. Um, it'll look great on your shelf next to all your other Sabina Kane books. Sorry about the beep. Um, and um, sorry, somebody being done. Um, so you should get it. Um, it's available on Amazon, but you can also get it on Barnes & Noble, IndieBound, whatever your favorite retailer is. And the reason I did this print copy only is that um, my publisher, Orbit, who originally put the eBooks out, has the rights to the eBooks. And they put them out individually as eBooks. And you can get them uh, like you would other eBooks right now, individually. Um, but there were some of my readers who were in countries that didn't have access to the eBooks, who couldn't get them. And frankly, there's still a lot of people who just prefer print. And so to make everybody happy, I decided that we needed this. And people who have gotten it so far have been really happy. Um, and I'm super psyched about that. I 
think that um, you will love it if you haven't read the stories. Uh, it gets you back into that world. Um, which brings me to my second bit of news. Um, so this morning I Skyped into Transylvania. I mean, these are words I never thought I'd say like, Hey, yeah, I've, sorry. I've got to Skype into Transylvania today. Um, but the cool thing is there's this event called the international vampire festival, uh, film and arts festival, which is happening literally in the town where vampires, uh, blah, blah, where, um, what's his name? Dracula, Dracula's castle is. And they're having this huge festival that's a film festival. They have an academic conference where they're bringing in the best vampire academics from around the world to present papers. And they also had a, um, a, a contest or a competition for vampire fiction. And I submitted my story, Children of Ash, for consideration. It is the second book in my Meridian 6 series. Um, and it is the story of how... Um, the human rebels have to infiltrate a work camp run by the vampires to save some children who were um, taken uh, prisoner. Um, and if you haven't tried the Meridian 6 series and you like vampires and you like sort of post-apocalyptic stories, you will love this series. It's my one of my lesser known ones because it, it's one that I self-published. This is the first book, Meridian 6. Um, so Meridian Six was basically like a blood concubine for the vampires who enslaved the human race. And she escaped and now she's being used by the human rebels to help kind of overthrow the vampires. It's got a very kind of futuristic, um, post-apocalyptic tone. Uh, it's a little bit dystopian. The vampires are kind of like Nazis, which I know is uplifting, but it's actually kind of timely. The series came out before the, the current political climate. Um, but it actually ends up being pretty germane to what's going on um, as far as how we were overthrown and how we were enslaved and some of the things that, um, you know, some themes that are going on. So check it out. Uh, I will be Skyping into the IVFAF this Sunday to do a talk on Children of Ash and to also talk about why I write vampire fiction, what I love about writing it. Um, it turns out I... You know, this is my second vampire series. The Sabina Kane series obviously had a lot of vampire stuff in it. And this series is a little different because the vampires are, you know, definitely the bad guys. Uh, there's no, you know, two ways about it. They've enslaved the human race, so they're not good. Um, so it was really fun to sort of write monstrous vampires for a change instead of heroic ones. So that's really cool. I'm excited. They announced the winners of the Golden State Contest, which is the award that the book is up for on, I think, Sunday night, maybe. Maybe. I don't remember when. I If I win, I'll let you know. I hope I win. If I don't, I'm still really honored because it's very cool to have a group that knows vampire fiction so well, you know, nominate one of my stories as one of the best vampire uh, novels out there. Uh, this year. So that's awesome. Check it out. Those are also available. These are available in, in print and ebook. Um, Meridian 6 is also out in audio. I haven't done audio of Children of Ash yet, but if there's enough demand for it, I would do it. Um, which brings us to the third thing, the third big thing that happened this month that if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, you will know. If you don't, you're about to find out some big news. Uh, I am... I'm writing the fourth Prospero book. Yeah. Like all of you who have been sending me emails and messages saying, where's the next book? Like it's coming. I am wrapping up rewrites right now so that I can send it to my editor at the end of next week. And the title of the fourth Prospero book is Volatile Bonds. Um, it is, it happens just a few months after the action of Deadly Spells, which was book three. Um, and it's, um, it's based on the alchemical process of conjunction. You know, each book in the series is based on a different stage of alchemy. Uh, if you didn't know that, now you do. Uh, so the fourth book will be on the theme of conjunction and you'll have to find out how I handle that. Um, but it starts with uh, basically a potion lab explodes and that's how team, the team gets involved in the case. Um, so I'm working on that. Uh, I am going to have this book out by September. Uh, I have 
editors hired, I have cover designers hired, um, and I'm hoping we can get it all uploaded and ready to go by mid-September um, because I'm going to an event called StoryCon in New Orleans that month and I would really love to have it there for my readers because I know that you guys have waited so long for this book and I am I could not be more excited about getting it done and and getting it to you um, and you know frankly some of it's been selfish because I've really missed writing these characters um, I don't plot my books in advance so you know for me finishing the series out is pretty selfish because I want to see how it all turns out I actually do know what the final scene of the entire series is, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. So I'm kind of excited to see how with how that's going to happen. Um, but I hope you're excited. I um, I am self-publishing the books. Uh, I am doing that for a variety of reasons, none of which have anything to do with me being mad at New York or walking away or you know, like, screw those guys. Like, it's not like that at all. It's just simply that the market for urban fantasy shifted from New York to self-publishing. Um, you know, New York stopped um, buying the books because the market was so glutted with urban fantasies, which is great for readers, but it's not very good for publishers when they're having to compete with like 60 new titles a month, which is what it was at its height. So what happened is, you know, like the, they stopped buying them, but the readers still wanted them. And so now they're going and finding them um, through... Uh, authors who have gone indie um, so that's what I'm going to do with this series I'm going to finish it um, this does not mean that I will never ever submit things to New York again or work with them again I have books on submission to them right now um, I have nothing but respect for the people at Orbit who launched this series and did such good work you know creating gorgeous covers and getting the books in your hands. And I mean, I would not have people emailing me asking for more books if the people at Orbit didn't do their job. So, you know, huge respect to them. Um, this is simply the best way for me to get the books to you. Um, so I hope you're excited. Um, my plan is to put them out initially in print and ebook at the same time. Uh, and then I am trying to figure out how to get the audiobook done. Um, so that it matches the first three books. There was a specific narrator um, who did the first three books, and if I can, I'd like to continue to work with them, but I don't know if I'll be able to, so I'm still figuring out those logistics. But just understand that it's all coming. I fully intend to have the reading experience be as, as wonderful as the first three were. I'm still writing the books, so you can, you know, they're going to be the same kind of story. The quality level is not going to go down. Um, it's just, I'm getting them to you in a different way. Um, so if you have questions, definitely let me know in comments. Um, keep an eye on my social media feeds or just sign up for my newsletter. I'll put the link below if you want to have updates. Um, I'll be launching the cover in July of this book of Volatile Bonds. And then I'll also be starting a series read along with my readers in July um, through Goodreads where you can, you know, I know that a lot of you have already read the books. This allows you to catch up and refresh yourself on what happened in the first three books. So you'll be ready for book four. Or if you haven't tried the series yet, it's kind of a great way to pick it up and start over again. Um, I'm also currently giving away 10 signed copies of Dirty Magic at Goodreads. Um, if you go there, you can sign up really easily. They're announcing the winners on June 8th. So you have some time left to sign up. Um, and just so you know, I'm also going to be giving away copies of Cursed Moon and Deadly Spells over the next couple months on Goodreads. Um, but, you know, if you are anxious and want to get on it, you can start rereading them now um, because I, you definitely are going to want to get book four when it comes out in September. Uh, anyway, that's what's been going on here. Pretty cool stuff. I hope you're excited. Lots of good stuff coming. Lots of good stuff just happened. Um, I hope you're having a great day. I hope that you are writing if you are a writer. I hope you're reading good books if you're a reader. And uh, here we go. I will talk to you soon. And as always, if you have a question about writing, let me know in comments and I will address it in a future episode. 
And you can also check out my website at www.jwells.com. Thanks. Have a great day.